Welcome to Harma. This video is a general overview of Harma and its synthesis tools. The first thing to do when learning Harma is to open the spectral display. Do that from this switch here. It shows the partials or harmonics sent to the synthesis engine. Octave mode is just another vertical scaling. The main synthesis controls appear in the upper display here. Although there is an image and resynthesis section under the IMG tab, which we'll have a look at later. With regard to synthesis in Harma, there are two identical parts A and B that operate in parallel. Change between these using the AB switch. By default, A is active and B is not. You activate the parts with these switches down here. You can use the slider to fade between them. Here is part A. and B. Like most controls, you can right click it and reset to the default. Related to the parts, you can click the link control here and then any change on one part will be replicated in the other. For example, this pluck filter. So now both pluck filters are the same. If I unlink it, then the changes are independent. There's also a right click copy to part A or copy to part B depending on what part is selected. A nice feature of Harmer is that most controls feature articulation or modulation envelopes and you can see the envelope panel down the bottom. For each target there is a range of articulation parts. So the volume for example can be controlled simultaneously by each of these parts. Before many envelopes become active, this switch needs to be selected here. For example, we currently have selected the volume envelope for part A for the Timber 1 sawtooth wave. If I activate the envelope, we get the volume modulation. Some of the other important controls are in the menu, which has options like open and save state or envelope files, also again, you can copy part A to part B. You can also lock to tempo. If I select the snap option, it now snaps to the background grid. These ADSR knobs are useful as they can also be automated. They're multipliers for the envelope sections. When you let go, the display will snap back, but the multiplier effect is remembered. Curve points have right click menus and most are set to a single curve type. Another nice feature of the interface is that rather than hunting in the list of articulation targets, you can right click controls, let's say the filter cutoff frequency, and select edit articulator. The default articulation part is the LFO. So let's have a look at these controls. Remember first to activate the LFO envelope. We can change the speed here, tension, the shape, etc. To change the amplitude, grab this point here. You can also make complex time based changes by right clicking the display and adding points. For example, if you wanted to synthesize a brass instrument sound, you might use the envelope to create an overblow effect on the attack part of the note. So wobble is useful for something other than dubstep after all. Another display helper, when you're looking at factory patches, you can quickly see what envelopes and parts are active by the arrows in front of them. OK, one final thing before we leave the envelope section, you can also drop audio files on them and analyse the amplitude. For example, I have this drum loop. After dropping it on the volume envelope, you can see we have the same rhythm. Now there are a lot of points there, so it's also an excuse to mention the envelope tools available under the menu here. 
I'll use the Decimate Points tool, and that can be used to filter points from an envelope. But we'll look at those in a future tutorial. Synthesis. Now we understand something about the envelopes, I can talk about the voice sources in Harmer. You'll already be aware of the Timber 1 and Timber 2 sources up here. A square wave and a saw wave. And you can blend between the two with the mix knob. So, how can we change these waveforms? There are two methods. First, if you double click them, you'll open the Timber Harmonic Level for the oscillator. The Timber Harmonic Level envelope controls set the levels for each harmonic in the additively generated waveform. What I'll do is turn down all harmonics except for the fundamental. And notice that we are left with a sine wave. So now we have a sine and a square wave. Now additive synthesis is all a bit too complicated for me and fortunately there is an easier way to obtain waveforms. Here I have a single cycle waveform in Edison, FL Studio's audio editor, and I can drop that on an oscillator and it will be analysed and duplicated. Easy. You can right click the timber windows to browse and load a file too. Next, let's consider a very cool audio source, Resynthesis. Start by selecting the Resynthesis preset and then drop any sample onto the image window. The sound you're now hearing is my voice after it has been resynthesized in Harmer. So you can hear the quality of resynthesis is excellent. In fact, you'll be struggling to tell it apart from a sampler. There are a number of controls, including some useful ones like speed, dips, else like speed, and use this one to relocate the time from here to here to here to here to here to here from here and here. You probably noticed that I can jump about in the sample from the keyboard. The sound you're now hearing, the sound you're now hearing, so you can hear, so you can hear that there are a number, there are a number of how to do that. I'm using the image time offset envelope to map the start time as a function of keyboard key. Now it gets better. You don't need to program that envelope manually. The sound, the, the, so, so, so there are, there, there are, from, from here. What I did was put my sample in Edison or you can use any audio editor that can add audio markers. And I put markers at the points where I wanted to play from. The sound you're, the sound you're now, so you can, so you, so you can, there are, no, there, are no, there are a number of controls, including some useful ones. Then, in Harmer, from the image options menu, I selected map audio markers to keys. And Harmer creates the envelope for you. Now, I don't have time to cover everything in this tutorial, but I'll point your attention to the format control down here. The sound you're now hearing is my voice. Uh the sound you're now hearing is my voice after it has been resynthesized in Harmer. So you can hear the quality of resynthesis is excellent. In fact, you'll be struggling to tell it apart from a sampler. There are a number of controls, including some useful ones like speed. Make sure the mix to the right is at 100% to hear it. Finally, you can convert an audio to an image file and then edit it in an image editor or load images to hear how they sound. To get that into your image editor, just click copy and paste and then edit away. Then paste back into Harmer. But we're going to have to leave that for another tutorial as well. Next we have the effects section. That really doesn't need much explaining except that you activate the effects from these switches. Or some, like distortion and chorus, need a type selected before they become active. And last, we have the Advanced tab. A feature you'll probably find useful here is the ability to reorder synthesis units as shown above. You can put your mouse over the unit and roll the wheel, or click them to change the order in the stack. Top is first, bottom is last. You can rearrange the effects in the same way too. A few other notable controls, you can change the precision of the resynthesis. Usually, generic is enough. You can denoise your samples here, 
and the side switch is selected when you use the template resynthesis preset for importing stereo samples. Monophonic modes here and some quality settings. But I've already shown you too much and you'll just be encouraged to start fiddling back here, which you shouldn't. It's for advanced users like, um, like, like Charles Deluxe. With that, and since I've been boring you to death with blips and bleeps, I'm going to leave you with a downloadable FL Studio project from Charles Deluxe, showing just what Harmer can do in the hands of the talented. Charles Deluxe. Harmer Demo. We'll